we will start with Beverly Yet and then Rosanna Mabi and Yara Green and then finally Susan Bandler. And I will each introduce each one so you, because the, um, the, the bios are really uh, quite wonderful and I want you to associate it with each speaker. So Beverly Yet uh, said, uh, started actually when her children were in elementary school um, bringing science to youngsters and I guess a lot of parents have done that but Beverly is a bones person uh, and actually she one of our famous um, volunteers she actually appeared in a Japanese newspaper, Japanese newspaper <laughs> with, a with <picture>. your name <laughs> picture of me and your name <laughs> nobody knew the difference <laughs> It was, in, it was in English, so they didn't know. Um, and she studied biology as an undergraduate, uh, and cell biology and physical anthropology as a graduate student. But then she went abroad with her husband in the Foreign Service, and they didn't need anthropologists there, so she became a, a specialist in management. And retired, and as she says, was thrilled to find reset and uh, was able to use in her background. I, I don't know if you're, I've seen her work, and it's always interesting she brings in a box of human bones. Uh, nobody we know, I think. Um, <laughs> and she's been with Reset for five years. Please, Beverly. Uh, you want to come up here? Or? Doesn't matter. Well, yeah. People in the balcony came here. You know, okay. <laughs> Well, Harold gave you a brief summary of my background, and one of the other places I volunteer is at the Forensics Anthropology Lab in Smithsonian. They have a fantastic exhibit, among others, called Written in Bone, and it's Forensic Anthropology of the 17th Century Chesapeake Bay Area. And I encourage you all to see it if you, <laughs> if you haven't. Back when I was in graduate school, they didn't teach forensics. They hardly taught physical anthropology. And I was very fortunate to, because at the time that I was bringing my box of bones and my skeleton into my kids' classrooms, they, the med GW Medical School moved from 13th and H, and some of you may remember when it was there, and it moved down to the main campus on 24th Street. And because they were replacing all of their biological material, I asked rather naively, oh, can I keep my bone box? I'm using it in my kids' elementary schools. And they said, yeah, we're not going to use it that one anymore. And so all the years I was in Foreign Service, my box of bones and my skeleton <laughs> lived in storage. So when I started working with Reset, I was one of two biologists in the group. And I don't do experiments in the class, but I do projects in the, cl in the classroom. And depending on which grade that I'm working with, we do, we do projects that are related to, gro to bone growth and systems and how joints move and make, make analogies with other things that the kids see in their everyday life, like a hinge, for, for example, and just try to relate it to the kid, to what they are familiar with and my I mean I have two aims one is be excited about science and the other one is science isn't scary and it's and it's just a you know it's just a word and you see it all around you and you work with it all the time and the other thing is to educate some teachers to the fact that science and math are not scary because I was very surprised to find that 40 years later, a certain percentage of elementary school teachers still think that science is scary, and you teach it at on Fridays between 2 and 3, and that's it. It's not around you. It's, it doesn't have any impact on the rest of your life. Well, some of the things that I have done that have went very well with the teachers, and Harold asked that we talk about what worked and what didn't work. The mo I think the most important thing is that the teacher is involved in what, in what we're doing, that they're interested and they're involved. 
some teach and I mean I know as well as we all, we all know sometimes you have to feign a certain amount of enthusiasm in this classroom nobody is excited about everything so a certain amount of being up there is acting right. and and you have to get the kids as enthusiastic as you want them to be and if you're not enthusiastic about it the kids pick it up faster than instantly right and that and in one classroom I I was at that presented a real problem because the teacher thought that this was her free period <laughs> and, <laughs> and discipline oh am I supposed to <laughs> am I supposed to do that well may, maybe not and needless to say even on the field trip that class was very uncontrollable and I didn't see my role as spending half of my hour lesson to say if you would like to speak we come up to the front of, to the front of the room um, even sign even signing because they had had a lesson on Ansel and even signing is speaking and do you want to share share etc I mean we've all we've all been there and that was something that doesn't work the other thing that really works very well is if the teacher is interested and will follow up on, on what we have done in the classroom. On the other hand, it's important for us to be aware of what the teachers are doing and the science of learning and the units that they're doing so that, this, though I'm a biologist, I'll, if I see that the class is doing proportions and we've been working on the skeleton, we'll start to work on how you can estimate the height of a person from the length of a long bone, work out the equations, and then say, here are the bones, measure them, and figure out how tall the person that, whose bone that was probably it, probably was. Last year we had a very funny experience because when we did the math up on the board, <coughs> I had goofed. I readily acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. But the figures that they got for two of the leg bones would have the person at about 10 feet tall. <laughs> and we knew that that was not right. <laughs> and so the next week we came in and I had a table that I had copied from the exhibit at the Smithsonian from the lab. And we, we said, okay, something was not right. This is science. Not everything is always what you expect it to be. And we went back and we measured again and we compared it to the, t to the table and then we did it again so brought the idea of being able to replicate your results that just because you do it once and it works does not mean that it's that it's the gospel and the other thing that's been really important is when the teachers actually participate and will bring and will bring in analogies with other things in other areas that they've studied whether it was that week two months ago or something like that. Now my job as a volunteer is also to find out what they're going to study so that you can so I can plant some ideas for future for future study that the teachers are, are going to do and also reinforce things that they have covered in science. And so so we, we sort of work together on reinforcing concepts and, and giving a lead in to things that they're going to study. And more important is the relationship between what they're learning and not so much subject matter, but science and scientific method without having to beat it over the head with a name and everyday life and evaluating and analyzing things. In terms of difficulties that I've had in the classroom, lack of interest on the part of the teachers, oh, I don't, you know, I don't have to know this, or this is much too difficult for these kids, despite the fact that I may have done a similar lesson a year before with a, with a class the same age or younger, and that's just lack of interest and lack of enthusiasm and more important not make if the teachers 